in a lot of the videos that I've done so far where I spoke mostly political topics, speaking about, you know, immigration and all that stuff. I see a lot of comments from people talking about the fact that I should stop talking about Africa and being Afrophobic, being xenophobic, yada, 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 yada. Talk about the real enemy, whom the real enemy is the colonizers. The real enemies are the white people. The real enemies are the white people that came in and colonized and took slaves in your country and all of that. While I do, in fact, understand where you're coming from with that, because it is facts, right? I understand fully. Oh, check this out. I made tilapia because I build muscles. But anyway, that's not the topic of the video. I do understand where you are coming from with these comments. I do understand why you want me to talk about these things. And of course, I will talk about these things because I'll be honest, this YouTube channel, I really just started it to mostly talk about business. But recently, it's just been me talking about things that I want to talk about. It may be political, it may be business, it may be something to do with being a man or emotional, anything of that sort, right? And people seem to want you to choose a side. And I'm not choosing a side. I'm, I'm right there in the middle, I think. You know, if one would ask me my political leaning, I've got no political leaning. All I want is good governance. All I want is fair governance. So if that comes from a white political party, it's good governance and it's fair governance and it's progressive for everyone, then I'm on that side. If it's by black people, I'm on that side, as long as it's good, as long as it's fair to the people. Now, my issue is that it seems that most black people want to infantilize themselves or black people, like just generally. You want to treat it as though the black people that we have that are adults, myself, are what you want me to infantilize myself. It sounds and feels as though people want to me to place my anger in one group of people or one specific target and that is impossible because if as a small business owner I am trying to grow my business there are multiple factors that affect the business to grow or that negate the growth of that business so you can't ask me to just talk about one specific group of people and ignore the other group of people when that other well when both groups of people actually affect me in some shape or form so if we are talking about illegal immigration and we are talking about black criminals who are nine times out of ten going to be from Africa are doing crimes in our own country. And yes, my country, our country, South Africa, it has borders. And with those borders being in place, if you are coming in to do crime in this country and you are from outside of these borders, I am going to talk about it. And I'm going to talk about it when it's about criminals who are within the country but because i'm talking about criminals we are, which are within the country i'm not going to ignore you okay and nine times out of ten as i've explained this people are intentionally ignorant or intentionally just don't listen they just listen to comment 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 that's why i ignore a lot of the comments but i'm going to talk about that and I'm going to talk about the other people as well, okay? Imperialism, colonialism, well, we will talk about that. But do not act as though the other topics are unimportant. Because as a South African who is born in 1994, I am what is called a born free, okay? So the true effects or the true activities of apartheid the only way I witnessed them is through documentaries, through movies, through stories. I have not experienced them myself, right? So, yes, of course, I can talk about the long-term effects of that having happened 30 years ago, because, of course, they are there, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that I know exactly what it feels like to walk around in town and a white police officer comes to me and says, let me see if you have a pass for you to be in this specific area and not in that other area. I have not experienced that. The only way that I would probably be able to experience that is if I go to another country and a police officer stops me and says, let me see your ID. You're South African. Okay, let me see your ID. Or let me see your passport, your identification uh, papers for you to be in this country, which would make me a legal immigrant or a visitor in that country. That's the only way I would experience a police officer calling me to check 
my identity just because I am not belonging in a specific area, not because of the color of my skin. No, right? So since I've not experienced that, I can talk a bit about apartheid and how it has affected black communities, but I cannot talk about how it has affected me. And when I talk about things on this channel, I talk about things that have affected me. And of course, on a broader spe spectrum, I have to read, I have to learn what other people are experiencing, and I have to do my research. So, yes, we'll talk about imperialists and all of that, but let us not infantilize black people and black leaders especially and act as though they are acting on, the, on their own. And with these black leaders being there and the imperialists, which are typically white people, when they come in and suppress or oppress people in some shape or form, nowadays being in a way in which they can incite civil wars and so forth, so that they can extract an aluminium example in the DRC by the Oppenheimer, which is a white uh, South African family. The way that they are going to do that is through the help of the black leaders. So which is why I said the enemy of a black person is another black man, most probably. Because I, as a born free, I'll go back to that because that's the point I was making. I, as a born free black person, the people who have affected my life the worst, who are at the top echelons of um, the like political spaces or financially, it's black people. It's black leaders. It's the black ANC, the black EFF, the blacks, people like myself. We could also say that DA definitely has affected me some shape or form, right? But for the last 30 years, who was in power? Was it not black people? Was it not black people who were colluding with these white people that you people want me to focus on as the main enemy? Was it not black people that are working with these people? When you are in Nigeria and you are talking about how oil is being sold outside of Nigeria and only people who are benefiting are the politicians. Are those politicians not black? They may be selling to Arabs, they may be selling to white people, but are their politicians not black? When you are in the DRC and you're complaining about hunger, you're complaining about poverty, but the politicians are filthy rich, are they not black? Are they not Afro? Are you now Afrophobic for calling them out? If you are in Kenya and taxes are increased on you because of corruption, because of mismanagement of funds by the government, whom the government is black. So who is the enemy for you? Who is my real enemy? Because when I Google right now to find out who's the president of my country, it's Cyril Ramaphosa. And the last time I checked, Cyril Ramaphosa is a black president. Whom is? He's a coward, that guy. That guy is a mangina. He's a mangina. If he was not a president, rich guy, he would be an incel. That's Cyril Ramaphosa. Weak, weak, weak. Weak. Good person. He's a good guy, you know. He's a nice guy. Yeah, he's a nice guy, actually. Nice guy. But a weak man. I have no respect for him as a president and as a man. And the president before him is who? Jacob Zuma. Isn't Jacob Zuma? Jacob Zuma. Bob Jacob Mshulosi. Isn't he a black president? Wasn't he a black president? Before him, it was Tabumbeki. Wasn't Tabumbeki black? Before Tabumbeki, it was Nelson Mandela. Were they not black? Now, a lot of these presidents, uh, Nelson Mandela, Tabumbeki, Jacob Zuma, they did do some good under the ANC. They did do some good, a lot of good. They just do a very bad job at talking about the good that they have done. But because they don't own the media, we know about the lot of bad that they have done. And the bad that they have done, I have personally experienced. I can speak about it. Because if in a family, I'm the head of the family, and the body is doing whatever it wishes to do, the person who is to, bl to be blamed is the head of the family. So I am going to blame the president first, before all the ministers, before all the councillors, before all the political leaders that are underneath this said president. And my question goes back to this. Are they not black, these political leaders that are voted in? Not by me. Not by me. Are they not black? They're black. So I'm not being Afrophobic if I'm going to call out a black South African president, if I'm going to call out corruption in Nigeria, in Kenya, in Zimbabwe, in Mozambique, in Lesotho. I am not being Afrophobic. 
I'm calling out my brother for the bullshit that he is doing. Or she, my sister for the bullshit that she is doing to my other sister and my other brother. I have all the right to do that. So to say that my main enemy is just the white imperialist is incorrect. I've got two enemies here or more. I cannot talk about this one enemy and ignore this other enemy. Two things can be true at once. Two things can be true at once. And I'm talking as a person actually who is a... When I read and learn about systems in a country, I think I'm more capitalist than I am communist or socialist. Excuse me. But there are things in capitalism that I don't like because in capitalism I can be an oligarch. I can own a monopoly, which is unfair for everyone else who's going to start off small, like me. But at the same time, I do not really agree with communism because what are you telling me? I start an entity and that entity is in some shape or form owned by my government and if they don't, if they don't like me personally or if I don't, I do things that are against what they believe in. My business gets shut down. I share most of my profit with them. No, don't want to do that. And socialism looks like I have a business. I pay 50% taxes or more or less. And it goes to somebody who just wakes up in the morning. Uh, stretches, stands by the gate. And, oh, the sun is looking good. Yeah, has a tea, a cigarette, goes back home. At the end of the month, this person has to have a piece of my money that I worked hard for through taxes. No. So all of these systems have things that I don't agree with. And they do have bits and pieces of things that really make sense to me. But uh, that's a topic for another day. Now the topic is, you don't choose, you don't get to choose who my enemy is. And if I've got two enemies sitting in one room, you don't get to tell me I must blame the other more than the other. These are not infants sitting in the room. It's not an adult and an infant. These are two grown people making decisions. Both are greedy. One is very hungry and greedy. The other is very filled. It's a glutton and still greedy and wants more. And what do they do? They go take that one who's very hungry, greedy, and wants to be the only one in that room. And they sponsor that person. It may look like a Petrus Mutsepe. It may look like a Cyril Ramaphosa. Or a president of your African country, which nine times out of ten is going to be a black president. So yes, the enemy, when they are in one room, it's not just one specific group of people. Let's stop playing this. Let's stop looking too much into the past and getting stuck there. Because we get stuck in the past. I don't want to be stuck in the past. I am not stuck in the past. In the present, what I'm experiencing right now, it is affected by multiple factors. And I'm not going to uh, focus on one factor because if we are talking about a specific structure, the structural integrity of that structure has to focus on the whole foundation, not one part of the foundation. Because if I focus on one part of the foundation, then the structural integrity of this structure is no longer solid and everything will crumble. So you don't get to choose for me who I focus on. I can look into history, which I've done a lot of. I can know a lot of it. And know enough of it to know that it can repeat itself. And with it being able to repeat itself, I must look at the current people who may lead to history it's repeating itself. I'm done with this one. Let me know what you think. Let's have a conversation. Salute.